hi hello how's it going welcome back to my studio i know it's been a while since i last uploaded a video on here but alas here we are um, today i'm going to be teaching you how to paint a pink peony from start to finish i will have a sketch available for you to download over on my website i will include the link to my website down below in this description box i will be walking you through everything step by step from the materials that i'm using to the colors that i'll be using to paint the peony i will also have this picture available for download over on my website so you can use it as your reference photo um, that is a photo that i took myself of a PD that I was gifted a couple of years ago so I give you permission to download it and use it for your own learning purposes. But yeah, without further ado, let's dive on in. Okay, so this is my setup here. I have my iPad on a case stand so I can look at my reference photo as I'm painting. I have a mug of a variety of different brushes. I have a masking tape, a gum block eraser, an F pencil, a sheet of watercolor paper. This one is Arches 140 pound cold pressed paper. So it's got that lovely texture on it. And then I have a cardboard that I will be taping the paper onto um, along the edges here so that it doesn't buckle when I add watercolor paint onto it and then over here i have my watercolor palette and colors that i squeezed from um, paint tubes i use winsor and newton professional watercolor paints and then i just have a rag here that i use to wipe my brushes with um, when i'm changing colors and then i have a jar of water to rinse my brushes with oops <laughs> that was close and then a couple of pieces of scrap paper to test the colors before i actually apply them onto the painting and then i have a spray bottle here to activate the colors that i have on here i have squeezed them a while ago so they've completely dried up and they're solid right now so i use this spray water onto them to activate them and then yeah, that is it. As for the colors that I'm going to be using, I have sap green, caroline green, lemon yellow, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, and opera rose. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is take my masking tape and then tape the watercolor paper. Um, onto the cardboard here, not only to keep it steady, but also to keep it from buckling when I add the watercolor paint onto it. I'm just going to tear pieces. But as I said, I will have this sketch available for download off of my website. So look out for the link in the description box down below you can obviously pause the video here and take your time to sketch the stencil before we get going okay so i'm done my sketch here here it is for a closer look Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is grab my scrap papers and then I have a size 3 brush here. So I'm going to dip my brush in water and then grab Opera Rose. I'm just mixing it on my palette here and then let's see what it looks like on the scrap paper here. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, so if I pull up the reference photo here, and then show you the opera rose, it's pretty close to the pink that I want to achieve. 
So I'm going to use La Pura Rose on its own. And then as for the darker values of the flowers, the flower, like right along here and over here, I'm probably going to have to come up with a mixture to achieve that color. So I think I'm going to take Opera Rose and then add a tinge of alizarin crimson to that mixture to make it look a bit more like a darker pink. So it's a tad darker. You can't really tell, but that's actually good because with gradient looks like this, going from like light to dark, we want to be gradual with the change. So you want the colors to be, the color changes to be subtle. So this is good going from light to a little bit darker and then darker than that. So I'm going to add more of the alizarin crimson to the upper rows. Here we go. It's not that easy to tell. I don't know what it looks like on the camera, but it goes from light to medium to darkish. I want to go darker than that, but for now I'm happy with these three colors. Actually, no, let's scrap that. Let's try making that darker just one more notch by adding burnt sienna to the mixture that we have so far. So that was opera rose, alizarin crimson, and burnt sienna. So it's more of a reddish pink. It's actually not the color that I want, so maybe I'll add more of the alizarin crimson to that mixture to make it darker. There we go. Okay, that's more like the color that I want to use. It goes well with this palette here, so just ignore that little one there. So this mixture is Opera Rose, um, alizarin crimson, heavy on the alizarin crimson and a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, I'm going to grab one more piece of paper. Now we're going to test out the greens that we want to use for the leaves and the stem of the peony. We're going to be using sap green, which looks like this. It's a very true and light green. And then perylene green. Peony leaves are quite dark. This stem is more of a yellow olivey green and then the actual leaves are more like perylene green. I'm just doing a light wash right now, but obviously we're going to add more of the paint and less of the water to make it darker. And then I'm actually going to use olive green as well. I know I didn't mention it in the beginning of the video here, but we're going to add olive green. And that's what it looks like. Okay. So those are, those were all the colors that we're going to be using for the painting. I'm going to write down the names here so you can pause the video and take a screenshot if you'd like. Okay, so here are the colors one more time. Opera Rose, right here. And then Opera Rose and Alizarin Crimson. And then same mixture, Opera Rose, but heavier on the AC, which stands for Alizarin Crimson. And then we have, ignore that, we have the same mixture here, 
of the three colors so far. Opera Rose, heavy on the alizarin crimson, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And then for the greens, we have sap green, perylene green, and olive green. Okay. Okay, so we are getting close to the painting process here. Um, one more thing that I do before I start painting is that I study my reference photo. Um, so I look at the flower itself and then I look at the parts that are light, that are kind of medium, and the parts that are dark. So then when I'm painting, I know which parts to keep light and I know which parts to keep dark. And then as for the greens, you see that there are different values or different um, shades that you're looking at here. This is more of a lighter green, the olivey green, and the darker green. And then in here, it's obviously quite dark because that's where the shadow is. The light is shining upon the flower and then what's underneath the flower is in the shadow, if that makes sense. And then over here as well, you can tell that the inside of the leaf is darker and then the underside of the leaf is lighter. Alrighty, so we're now finally going to move on to the painting process. Okay, so as for my brush, I am using a Winsor & Newton Synthetic Stable Brush in the size 6. That's quite big. Um, I'm going to use this to paint the entire flower itself. I'm not really worried about the lines and the dark parts and the light parts at this point. We are just doing the first layer of the flower, so we're going to use this brush. Dip it in water, grab Opera Rose all on its own, and make a very watery mixture of it. With watercolor, you want to start light and then gradually work your way up. Okay, so this is Opera Rose and lots and lots of water. And we're going to cover the entire flower with this color. And one more thing that I'll note with watercolor is that when you first drop it on the paper, it looks darker, but when it dries out, it actually is gonna look lighter. So we don't wanna go too light. We want the color to be obvious, but we don't wanna go too dark either. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed up the video here and then I will catch you when we move on to the next step. Okay, so now the entire surface of the flower is painted with Opera Rose. We're going to move on to the leaves here and the stem. Being careful not to touch the pink here that's still um, waiting to get dry. So we're going to grab a smaller brush. I'm using Winsor & Newton series, series 7 in a size 3, so it's smaller than the 6 that I was initially using for the flower. And for this I'm going to grab um, a sap green mixed with lemon yellow. Wow, I forgot to swatch that color. It's not on here, but <laughs> I'm going to use a little bit of lemon yellow. Maybe I'll grab another scrap paper and show you what it looks like. There you go. And I'm going to take that mixture of lemon yellow and sap green and use that to cover um, the entire stem. that 
to paint all of the leaves as well. So when I'm painting, because I'm right-handed, I always try to go from left to right. So then I'm, I'm not touching the wet parts of the painting with the side of my palm, like this. So going from left to right usually helps with that. I'm trying my best here to not touch the pink with the green because we don't want the colors to mix. I'll take more of that mixture of sap green and lemon yellow and cover the entire leaves. Again, I'm going to speed up the video here and then catch you when it's time for the next step. Okay, so that should be nice and dry. One way to check if it's dry is to just tap on it a little bit. And if it's still cool, that means it's still wet. But if it's room temperature, like the rest of the paper, that means it's dry. Okay, so we're going to move on to the mid-tones of the flower. And for that, I'm going to be using two different brushes. So I'm just going to mix our mid-value slash mid-tone, which is alizarin, crimson, and opera rose. So yeah, I'm using that size one brush to paint with the color that we mixed. And then I'll be using the big brush, which is size three. And just dip that in water. Get rid of the excess water so it's just damp. And then use that to blend the edges of the color that we just dropped. There we go. And we are going to keep doing that. We're going to keep looking at the reference photo to see where we should be dropping this color and paint it on there and then blend. So that's essentially the steps that we'll be taking until the end of this tutorial. So look at the reference photo, drop the color where it should go, and then blend with a clean, damp brush. So you want to be mindful of where you just drop dropped um, the paint because that part is obviously wet. You don't want to touch it because if you do it's just going to get smudged. So just be mindful of where the wet parts are and try not to touch those until they're dry. I know it's still pretty early on in the tutorial but you can already see Um, add a dimension to the painting by just adding the mid-tones. I'm looking at the photo again and this leaf, or not leaf, this petal right here is quite dark. It's in the shadows so I'm just going to add more of the Opera Rose and the Lizard Crimson and then blend with the damp clean brush.
Okay. And then the middle of the flower here is also quite dark. So I'm just gonna take that mixture and then paint the entire thing. This entire section with that mixture. I think in fact, this is going to be the darkest part of the flower. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover the entire section in the middle with the mid-tone or mid-value. Here we go. And then over here, the underside or the inside of the petal is quite dark. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that with the mid tone as well. Okay, so we're going to wait for that to get dry. Actually, one more thing here. I see a harsh line forming right over here where the light value and the mid value meet. So I'm just going to take my damp clean brush and then blend that harsh line to make it look softer. To make the transition a little bit more gradual and soft rather than Arch. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna rinse my brushes in the water. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is work on the leaves. So I'm gonna take maybe this brush, the size one brush, and we're going to use Perylene Green and then paint the inside of the leaves. That's too watery, so I'm just going to pat my brush on the rag to get rid of the excess water and then spread that color where I want it to go. As for watercolor brushes with florals like this, I find that using round brushes um, is pretty ideal because they have a thicker body and then they gradually become pointy towards the end there. So the pointy part is nice um, to use to get into the nitty gritty parts of your painting. So like here. I can use the pointy part to navigate those little nooks and crannies and then I can use the body of the brush itself to spread that color by adding more pressure when I apply the brush onto the paper. See it just fans out the brush. painting all the leaves with this color so I'm going to speed up the video from here okay so this is where we're at right now 
I'm going to bring this up so you can see up close. We have painted the light tones or light values as well as the mid tones slash mid values. And then we have painted the stem and the leaves. And another trick to see if your painting is dry or wet is to tilt it sideways. And then if you look at the areas that you just painted, if they are shiny, that means they are still wet. And if they're not shiny, then they are either getting close to being dry or they are fully dry. Okie dokie, so now we're going to add more depth to the flower here by using Opera Rose, Elizer and Crimson, and a little bit of Burnt Sienna look. Alright, so I'm going to use the same brush that I was using before, the size 1. And I'm going to use that brush to drop the paint. So again, looking at my reference photo to see where the darkest parts of the flower are. So over here, it's quite dark. I don't want to paint the entire area where I painted the mid-tones because I want to show that gradual transition between light to medium to dark. There we go. And then over here. And then I'm going to take my size 3 damp clean brush to blend the color. the paint where it's supposed to go. Blend. It gets pretty monotonous, but it's fun to me. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this and speed up the video one more time. And then I will talk to you once we're done painting the dark layers. Okay, so for the middle section here, I'm just using a more concentrated uh, mixture of the same colors that I mentioned before. So Opera Rose, Alizarin Crimson, and Burnt Sienna, which means I'm adding only a little bit of water and a lot more of the paint to make it appear darker. And I'm just adding that in the middle section, kind of on the outer edge, and then blending it as I get close to the middle of that section. And then I'll do the same thing right over here. And it creates that beautiful, beautiful, soft gradient look. So this time I'm actually letting the wet parts, um, I'm letting my brush touch the wet parts because it creates that beautiful bloom right there where the paint kind of spreads toward where the water is. That technique is called wet on wet. So you're using a wet brush and um, dropping the paint onto a wet surface. Okay, so I'm going to keep using that mixture, just to add final touches to the flower. As you can 
see I'm using that dark color, dark value very sparingly because I don't want to make the petals too dark. I'm just dropping it in the airs where it makes sense for the petals to be dark. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna let that dry and then we will move on to the stem and the leaves. So we're gonna work on this bottom left leaf here. And we are gonna take our size one brush and perylene green with less water this time and more paint so it looks darker. And I'm gonna drop that right here. And then use the damp, a clean brush to blend that color. So now we're working on adding dimension to the leaves. Dropping darker values where it makes sense for the leaves to be darker by looking at your reference photo. dry and then we'll move on to the other leaves. Maybe we'll work on this big one here. So we are going quite dark right along the edges but we're blending it downwards to create a nice blended look. I hope this tutorial is making sense so far. If I'm not explaining things properly, let me know in the comments. I'm sure I'm using incorrect terms. <laughs> if you don't know, I am a self-taught watercolor artist. I didn't go to art school or anything like that. So if I am using incorrect terms, I apologize, but I hope that you get the gist of what I'm trying to teach you. leaf up here. The flower should be dry by now, but we're still going to be careful and try not to touch it. So yeah, the key to creating a realistic floral painting is to keep 
that variation of lights and shadows throughout the painting. You don't want it to look flat, so I'm keeping some parts light and some parts are super dark, as if you're looking at a real flower. Because when you look at a flower, it's obviously not flat. There's variations in the colors and there's lights and shadows. And that is what we're trying to mimic here. dark because it's at the very bottom of our composition so and it is under the big flower there so in real life it would be in the shadows suggest using high quality products um, using a really nice paper makes a difference and arches cold pressed I know is up there in terms of quality it can be expensive for sure but if you want your paintings to look really nice invest in good materials so like arches paper and then if you can get sable brushes these are the softest brushes ever and they hold a lot of water so they don't dry out easily um, you can also get synthetic sable which is half synthetic and half sable Windsor and Newton carries them but I know other brands do as well using quality material really does make a difference in the quality of my work And you don't have to get everything all at once. You can get, you know, one thing at a time. If you get paid bi-weekly, save a little bit of money per paycheck and put that towards investing in high quality art supplies. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for now to dry. I'm gonna rinse my brushes. And I'm done working on the flower, so I'm not going to touch that any longer. I'm just going to give um, the stem and the leaves a couple minutes, a couple minutes to dry, and then we'll keep working on them. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more life to our um, stem here. It's looking a little too desaturated, so what I'm going to do is take sap green. I think all on its own. And then just paint the light areas of the stem here. It's looking a little too cool, so we're adding a warm color, such as sap green, to give it more life. And we're gonna slowly pull that upwards towards the dark part of the stem. Oh, doesn't look as boring or flat as it did before and I think I'm going to do the same thing on the underside of the leaves so this is just plain sap green that we're adding to make the leaves look a little bit more lively Just by adding the sap green, it's um, creating more of a contrast between warm and cool. So cool means the color is more on the blue side of things and then warm means it's more on the yellow side of things. So if you look at this green here, it's more on the blue side 
And if you look at the green here, it's more on the yellow side. Again, if I'm not <laughs> using these terms correctly, please correct me in the comments, but that's how it makes sense in my head. And I'm gonna take that sap green and actually just add it to this big leaf here. just to give it more oomph and then I will do the same thing with this leaf here and these two I'm gonna leave as they are okay so the final touches for the leaves will be the little veins or lines but we can't do that right now because the leaves and the stem are all wet. So we're gonna wait a couple minutes again for things to get dry and then we'll add the final touches. And then that's it. Okie dokie. As for the final details of the leaves, I'm gonna use a really, really small brush. This is a double zero. And the brand is Allegro by Opus Art Supplies. And I'm going to take Perylene Green all on its own and add just the teeniest amount of water to keep it dark. And I'm going to paint the veins of the leaves. So peony veins, they're not your typical veins on leaves so there is one line that goes down the middle but then the other lines kind of go all over the place they go like that and then they branch off so we're going to try to mimic that to make it as realistic as possible to the other leaves. So yeah, the veins on the leaves are not very symmetrical. Like one side may look different compared to the other side of the leaf. So try to make it as asymmetrical as possible. There we go. And then one last leaf here. when I'm just gonna leave it as it is okay that is it I'm gonna zoom out here and then I'll show you the finished product thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you learned oh shoot you learned something new today I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what your most favorite part was or if you learned something new please let me know so i can keep making these videos and if you plan to share your work on instagram 
please tag me at Kathleen Niebuhr Art. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.